Welcome, beloved family of Ascension Pioneers. Today, I am guided, we are guided to do a little bit of a different video for all of us. The thing is that, as you know, and I've shared this before, um, my mission on this planet was always very different, it was very unique for me in the way that I experienced things, in the way I was somehow guided into processing a lot of the direct energy on the essence level and in a way I had to transform it. I have to make it into something that would produce a living structure which humanity can benefit from. And I've shared with you before that the mission of the so-called creation pillar is founded on the light beings which is a group family dynamics of what is called the sacred Elohim. I've shared with you before in my video of the Tantrika and the Sacred Holy Orgasm and there's an mp3 download you can get on my homepage which really talks about this meaning of the Tantrika beings and the purpose of bringing that infusion of direct light through essence level and you know becoming more and more form, becoming more and more of that liquid light of source, the tonic light and then eventually that which creates a vessel for the human physical experience so that the physical universe aspects can be fully infused with the light of the living source. And there is a lot of this which I was recently automatically writing for my book which is the third part of my grand design book. It's a trilogy and this third part is exactly focusing on this which is what is the seed of life? What is the Tantrika? What is the Holy Union? What is the Illumin Union? And in my whole life journey, I have been experiencing this journey of divine Illumin Union different than anyone else I've ever met. So all my knowledge, because there was no direct handbook written for this about how do you live as a creation pillar had to come through spirit directly. So all my life I was guided through spirit. I was guided through this presence of illumination and there was tests, you know, and it, there was trials and tribulations and there was moments and there's still moments when I'm getting these activations and getting these downloads when my body is just exhausted and uh, when I get a new wave of this essence which I then need to process which my body needs to you know filter into creating a, a tangible usable energy for this human structure and form on the planet because it's my being that does that within the group it's always a group effort I have to say this first it's not a single uh, mission so when I talk about the sacred holy Elohim, it's the family and we do this work together. My human counterpart, however, I, it has different assignments, but it's connected to this web of understanding of creation principles and what I'm meant to bring through, especially through the third aspect, the third chapter of my book. So today I felt called to share this essence with you um, because as you know, I believe that everyone, when they tune into their inner realms, can already channel what is within them. And we all best channel what is, you know, our group soul complex. We first start with the individual levels and then we see what kind of um, structures uh, with us, what resonates with our bigger structure. That's what I wanted to say here. So in this first part, I wish to actually read you the writing I did on the meaning itself of the word Tantrika because you probably noticed me talk about this a lot and I wanted to bring you a very simplistic understanding so I asked Spirit and my Elohim Light family to bring this understanding in a very simplistic form because what does it mean so we can have an understanding of that and then I want to bring you a channel message which when I say channel please understand it's not coming from the outside it's coming from my inner realm of spirit which is the greater group complex that I share within our group family dynamics um, so again I made many videos and I made in the past a video especially about Elohim but the essence of this within myself continues to deepen and it's something that just keeps coming up and coming up and in the first part of my journey when I was starting to awaken to this presence it felt so intense I had to literally withdraw from it for a while and I said no I don't want to be part of this you know it's a process within the awakening of who you are 
what's your mission on this planet what's the domain and because I couldn't find any resonance in in even in the spiritual circles I had to become a pillar of my own light to channel this for myself to let spirit show me and all my answers were given through nature um, through direct understanding I saw it like light patterns as, as principles and when I started channeling this information as sacred knowledge for my book which is in the second part it came as this what I always talked about we have this knowledge of creation principles and how everything functions because what we know as the great creatrix is the um, that basis it's like the chalice for every living thing that holds a structure within creation so we serve the white light of creation what this means is that there needs to be a proper distribution um, throughout the living systems and what the mission I see there's many different missions of course within one unified purpose but the main mission of the sacred family of the family that I belong to and my mission as a creation pillar on this planet in particular although it's not just service that's been done on this planet you know it's it's a simultaneous multidimensional ascension process the this most simplistic way how I can describe this is we bring the light of illumination into the worlds of creation which means that when there is a need for a planetary uprising of the life force we come and we basically change the living structures um, through the tantric understanding of this knowledge so when I say tantrica actually has nothing to do with tantra you know the it's it's again it's a level on it's it's almost like if you said it's tantra only on the creation level at the level of creation so it's this tantric confusion of life force and allowing and this can only be done through complete surrendering and allowing so my body has to be a conduit for this light and I've shared with you I've had so much challenging flow because of that because sometimes there's days as you know I'm very highly active but sometimes there's days when I can't do anything when for three days my body will just be processing all this energy and the body has become so intelligent that even though my mind says I want to go here I want to do this I want to go for a run the body doesn't allow me it's already so intelligent that it knows what it's processing and I simply need to create the space for that to occur so today without further ado I want to read you in this short presentation what is the meaning of Tantrika anyway what is the seed of life um, and why we're here at this time is because the earth is basically moving into this new form and where does this begin it begins at the level of rising of that life force so basically that as we know ascension it's not just the inner work right of building the white ascension pillar or the column of the ascended light but it's then the physical metamorphosis of that DNA which belongs to every single life form and then as it becomes almost a renewed form of that life so this is kind of like we do so we bring the infusion of light to different structures on the planet and we work with different aspects of creation basically nature and that's why all my life I've been in nature I've been outdoors and since the past few years um, a lot of my energy has moved down it has descended I'm not living as in I'm going up my up <laughs> in a way to say it in a simple form has moved down because it's the most challenging aspect to actually descend all this divine light into a form so that you can actually do the work on the level of these life forms and in their structures um, there is some information and someone just shared this with me today in the book of Enoch um, there is a chapter on Elohim there's a chapter of how this happens this transfusion in a way of translation that you know of life force into becoming different parts of energies so that humanity can later access them and harness them for their new greater good but this purpose we're actually doing here as this group of beings it's it has to be it, it's not on the individual level so all your egoic self to create only your reality to manifest your reality has to drop away it has to completely disintegrate so that you can actually become this embodiment the vessel of spirit because life force will tell you go here do that you know infuse this you know and you're not always consciously aware of what you're doing but sometimes a great amount of your energy will be used and you won't even know why you'll just be tired and then you have to reinforce that through some sort of action or whatever it will be guided in that moment and I had to learn this myself it wasn't always easy I tell you that but what came as a result as I was polishing my inner diamond I was creating this soul refinement for myself so I could do the sacred work was getting more and more obvious I, I was learning to recognize these cycles within myself 
I was seeing these things and although I said, well, these are just for me, Spirit said, well, no, you know, this is nothing to be ashamed of. This is what we're doing. <laughs> this is our mission. And in a way, I feel today, I was going here on the beach, the group kept saying, we, we want to be, we want to be heard. We want to infuse um, our light, you know, our light is a message and we want to share who we truly are because in the past, as I was awakening, I saw many people who supposedly channeled what is called Elohim and it was not really Elohim because it was, it was basically talking about how to manifest your reality, uh, different things like that. And Elohim don't, they don't do with that. We don't deal with that. We don't talk about manifestation on a personal level. We work on greater levels from planetary to much greater um, interstellar connections and uh, galactic levels, universal levels, so forth. It depends on which level you're tuning to at, this, at each moment. But <laughs> without saying too much, and then later giving also some room for the channel message, I want to read you this on the meaning of these sacred words and just feel in your heart. And although, again, we have a lot of language coming to us through perhaps in English language, it's not complete light language yet, but there's many codes that come as these syllables or certain consonants and uh, or vowels that when we speak them, when we speak the divine word, they flow through us. So uh, a lot of people speak light language, but I always tell you it has to come from within you to truly activate you. You can listen to others, but it's never going to be the same as when you allow that natural dialect, that the natural um, living organics within you to flow through you. That's the biggest part of what that truly is. So the Tantrika, the seat of life, what does it truly mean? The meaning of the name or the word Tantrika in terms of light language can be seen from its core roots, spoken as Tan, Tri, Ka, three words. <laughs> the word Tan refers to life force or universal Qi energy. You know, in Tai Chi, they use the words uh, Dantian, you know, and there's Tan in that as well, because it's about the usage of that, um, uh, the usage of, uh, it's actually the usage of that that comes through certain centers in the body but in itself tan um, means this represents this universal life word energy the word tree tan tree refers to divine trinity of life in creation because the elohim and the sacred tantrika it's the same thing um, it's all about the divine trinity it's moving of source into becoming the living creations that will be able to be sustained in their evolutionary developments and the word ka as you know probably those of you who are more metaphysical in your <laughs> in your knowledge refers to the spiritual form or the light body and that's the first form that's created later becoming through different it's almost like different seeding projects becoming more and more manifest in terms of physicality so therefore the word itself is a perfect representation of the purpose of the holy tantrika beings of light meaning that they use the universal life force of holy spirit in order to assist in the creation process of triangulation producing the spiritual or essence bodies or light bodies themselves these light bodies cannot be sustained without the universal light or life force which is a constant flow or precipitation of light which when focused on the aspect of uh, creation through densification you know becoming different structures and forms becomes the liquid light that runs as light particles which in turn have the ability to produce a life of density or form which now holds structure and substance so you need the life force to make forms animated, to make them living and organic. So how about the seed of life? So how the structure and substance will be expressed in terms of uniqueness is narrated or held within the seed of life. The seed of life as a code is a unique design held for a particular variation of creation within its core essence or the core self. As you know, probably I talked a lot about the core creation self and it's that return to your own inner seed of life your roots of, of your whole being. The seed of life is therefore a sort of a narrative of how universal life force will express itself in the unique form and design of that creation. When this first encodement is achieved in its fullest expression, that light component is then ready to become the so-called substance of life or the DNA, which we say it can be represented as divine narrative activation. So you're constantly activating yourself because you're constantly remembering or you know, you're creating through your DNA. 
So that divine narrative activation is now able to bring the seed of life into an actual living manifestation of form, which comes from the essence or core, forming a substance that is fully, that is fully able, pardon me, to hold the uniqueness of life patterns and designs expressed in numerous ways and forms. Such is the design for all life in creation in terms of translating life force, which becomes the various templates and designs for life that at last are able to become the exact living structures or replicas of the original divine design. So again, if you find yourself in any way um, tapping into the messages that say they're presenting the Elohim knowledge and they're all about the personal life and how you can personally better thrive or achieve better manifestation for yourself, it's not what the Elohim is about. The Elohim at its core is about understanding creation principles. So you, once your soul is almost like remembered or reactivated on that level, you become a vaster expression of your being, more in flow with serving life in creation. Your life intermingles with all life forms. And that I feel it's the biggest part of the message they want to bring through today because it's a constant, um, it's playing within my awareness that we on this planet has not been understanding the meaning of life forms, how they're all interconnected, how if you you just put a disrespectful act towards one form of life um, or you know just other fellow human beings that don't look like you or don't, they don't feel like you but that's just one way then there's also other uh, disrespectful acts we have towards life force expressed in these life forms that is because we have been completely cut off from this understanding and we haven't always understood so you know sometimes we pass on the street and say oh what a nice flower and then we're already walking by we're, we're lacking as a, as a you know group of beings on this planet this deeper awareness and this this deeper reverence for life force in these um, life forms which will be all from plant mineral rocks right not just other fellow human beings or animals um, there's so much here to understand and with the awakening of humanity this simply needs to see back because as the humans are ready to take back their stand as guardians of this planet because when they regain their full consciousness they automatically become the guardians um, and also of many different species of life we're not meant to govern them we're not meant to be the dominating force but we're meant to understand how creation functions and flows so we can have an organic reality through which an abundance is perceived through the biosphere or um, the biological life forms as well as understanding how life force uniquely expresses through them and that was so deeply cut off in, in the human genome that it's almost like you see certain people they can't connect to nature anymore you know or they connect on a very um, more like surface based level they go like oh that's nice in nature but then the next moment they literally literate or they ruin things or they're taking away things from nature but not taking anything back because the understanding of how the life force rises and we can all do that it's not just the Elohim they do that they they bring the messages of how everyone can contribute in that way is when you have the deepest awe and appreciation and respect for all life and all life forms and that's the kind of unconditional love that cannot be learned it's not in the books it's not in the scriptures it's not when people say I'm asking for a miracle please give it to me you know the true understanding here is if you're already asking for it you're not getting what the miracle is about it's complete dispensation of divine grace through the knowing that when you're in a state of pure love that true love the love that the majority of humans can't really access at its deepest hundred percent or more level that's just beyond this transcendental love then we can't really create miracles we might have certain visions or you know inclinations of what that might be but we're never fully tuned into that as becoming organically aligned with that so um, this is something that really wanted to flow through me as I was walking today there was like this knock <laughs> And my consciousness and I want to dedicate this next part to the channel message thank you for watching and I hope this brings many blessings not just to you and your personal reality but to your environment um, to your locale to the groups you connect to and the planetary and interplanetary energy because we can all work from the level of the self and infusing it into the all life and creation thank you welcome to this message of true love for all life in creation. Beloved ones, we're gathered here today not just 
with the particular reason of sharing a light encoded and life force infused message of the understanding of true love of creation and your lives and life forms within it but we also come with a specific request that for now at the special time of transition can yet still only be truly heard by those of you who are opening your hearts to a love that reaches the level of beyond just the personal reality that you are all creating for yourselves. This love has such a vast component to it that it cannot truly be understood. It is something that cannot be confirmed or affirmed in your reality. It is not something that you get as a reward for passing certain spirit initiations. It is something that always is there and always has been there. It is the love of Source translated directly into the living structure of all life in creation. And although many might say that not all life forms correspond to that because they're either in a way distorted or not serving the true plan of original divine perfection, yet we say to you that this is an illusion because that which feels densified in a way it feels that it has been coerced, manipulated and changed so drastically in its form that it ha that has not truly be the undertaking of that which you might call the higher beings of light who work within the domain of creation. That was a choice in order to experience the fallen frequency. And yet it is not the only reality so while so many are still holding on to that reality, they're not really helping with the seeding of the new reality of life and their belonging life forms. All life truly begins at its core. It is when Source decides to send forth different cycles of creation into motion. It takes a lot of divine effort for that light to become something expressed in a way that can later be utilized and experienced by unique individualized souls, which are all the aspects of you. And in such a way, when we understand this, when we feel, so we ask you to try to feel this in your hearts, how much effort through all these beings of light, all the divine orchestrators of the divine plan so that it can serve you, your growth, the experience of love in human form or in other life forms. When you feel that, when you are truly touched and moved by the profound nature of that love, you will understand with better knowing, with the eyes purified through the vision of spirit, and you will perhaps be a little closer to the perfection that we see. So many beings ask themselves, why certain beings who still operate within a lower density or perpetuate patterns of dense negativity or even strong destruction patterns within their life forms? And they ask themselves, why are they simply not destroyed or abolished from this planet? The thing is, if you understood that all life forms hold value, you would not simply act so eagerly and in a fast way to take life from them. It takes a lot to create life. And that is the aspect of the so-called beings who serve the life that becomes an expression of the essence of creation and expressed in such vast multitude of different realities and their experiences that lie within. When you understand that the meaning of life is sacred, everything in your reality has the ability to align itself back to the so-called natural law. The natural law is a state of divine neutrality or benevolence through which you no longer act as a judge to what forms of life decide by me can exist and what forms of life should not exist. That is what humanity has been doing for eons of time. They were encoded, they were almost programmed into believing that they're in a way a supreme race, which was a pattern infused and imbued within their DNA structure through those beings who actually thought they were, you know, as gods themselves in a way better 
and serving as the better to that which felt lesser than them. When the meaning of the love for all life and creation is understood and felt and lived, which means embodied directly through the experience of that love, there is reverence for all life and all life forms, including that which you would say it's a negative expression of life. May we say that that is not truly so, for the meaning of life in this particular galaxy has been to show how light is stronger and it is the only true aspect of source and it can overcome darkness. And in truth, when that is realized, it will overlight darkness and in truth, only greatness will remain. But it really takes great soul courage to also look into all the aspects of the self that have been moving against this natural law. Because this feeling was living within all. And if not personally experienced through the individual soul, it was a part of the human collective. So it was a part of the whole, for they all are one. What is now required and what we may propose through this special request is the state of that divine benevolence through which every being that is now ready can embrace within themselves back the state of the natural law, which is a state without any judgment over any other being, over any other beings, planetary or interplanetary, or existing on vaster levels of creation, and all other life forms. We ask you to, within your sacred hearts, release that judgment and ask to be held within not only your personal love and that which affects you and concerns you personally, but to remember in your sacredness the laws of creation, for you've all come from these sacred laws. These laws operate your dynamic the dynamic of your physical body, how your bodies function, how there is information of light traveling through your every cell and how they correspond and interact with each other. In such a way, when you learn to interact with greater levels of light within yourself and the vaster levels of the self, in a way we could call this the awakening of the angelic code within humanity, you basically create this translation of life force on a greater level of your existence. What this means now that you have embraced not only compassion for yourself, for other beings, not necessarily even other life forms, but you have embraced compassion for the entire creation, knowing that you play a vital role, a unique individualized component within the vastness of life and how Source wants to experience its allness. But you also, in a way, feel how you're moving along this process, how you're not just from this process, but you are of this process. So it takes great surrendering for you to know that it's not just your personal lives, your personal manifestation, because often this still creates a sort of polarity. It's not only the polarity between the good versus evil, quote unquote, or negative versus the positive. It's also that which is my world, my domain, and the reality of all life. So the simple request we're making as a group, as a family of light, is to accept not only love for the self, for fellow beings, compassion for all life forms on the planet, but to also feel within yourself the movement of the core of creation and all of its interdependent cycles that are playing out simultaneously within the great law of the divine plan of the so-called grand design. Because once you feel that, there is no aspect of life you are trying to change. You're trying to imbue with your own perceptions or judgments of how things should look like. And by loving in such a way, you love all. You love the totality. You love the absoluteness. You love both light and dark. So your polarities are not only merging within yourself, but with this movement into this state of consciousness, you're helping to 
embrace the greater merge of the polarities that are playing out in this vast cycles of creation and your also concurrent cycle which you're individually experiencing yourself and as a part of this planetary ascension that is currently at hand with this you activate the powerhouse within you that makes you not feel so small anymore because why do humans love to function so much and focus only on their personal reality because they think that that's the only domain of influence they have and let us not let us say that that is not truly so but it is once you embrace that you do have a bigger impact you do co-create with cycles of creation not only your personal cycles a lot of times people say well the lunar cycles or the solar cycles these are cycles of time and time when it is given through the lords of time coming out as physical creation expression itself it becomes these cycles of creation and so by embracing this bigger nature which is truly multidimensional in its essence you become the participants you become the sacred givers of life yourself you become empowered from within in such a way that you see life as sacred as holy because on this planet life has not been seen holy for eons of time except for the few illumined individuals and those who are now in the ascending modality so the sacredness of life is not just about saying life is sacred in one moment and then in the next moment acting against life even if only through the mental judgment of something that we feel it's less than or more than it's both judgment moving into the acceptance of all life and creation and being infused with the love of creation is not something which is a difficult process the mind makes things complex but remember again you are not your minds only you are a being of light that is just now beginning to remember and as you remember you have to know there's much more to remember the remembrance state is never truly over because as you're remembering you're also creating greater levels of the self that's how light works you bring greater levels of DNA within you you create more of who you are and that's why you meet yourself each time at a different level because life is about remembering and integrating the new and becoming in this expanded version of yourself this does not occur though without the acceptance of love of creation because it is that understanding it is not mental but in your heart it is centered it lies lies the seed of life and when you know that every design has the code of the seed of life within itself as do you how can it not already be perfect what is transpiring in what we would call the linear sense of reality might not always seem so perfect and that is also one perception and it is a part of the experience of being a human being but remember again that the experience of being a human being again is not an isolated one is not a linear one it continues to expand so those of you who are progressing into the acceptance of your illumined human nature becoming the new humans the new prototypes you're embracing the new guardianship role of your planetary structures by embracing the role of your inner guardian as there are celestial guardians they also need and require their physical representatives here on earth so that the celestial guardianship guardianship becomes the living manifestation of earth guardianship which also encompasses the essence of stewardship which is then demonstrating that to others through the light path live through the love of creation we thank you now and now we wish to do a simple attunement with all of you within the group to feel and embrace the love of all life in creation which is a sort of divine love that permeates everything it does not need to always structurally know what is what in terms of oh this is this galaxy this is what I belong to and that is that universe maybe there's other universes or multiverses it does not need to always know what is out there beyond what we can comprehend at this time it is the love that simply embraces all that is whatever it may be without condition 
And so your form will become more and more illumined through the understanding of that which occurs in your hearts. And now let's take a moment to take a deep breath into the heart. You can very simply re-energize your heart with life force. By directing your breath, remember your breath, whenever it is directed into, that is what you will energize. So when you breathe directly into your heart and rhythmically guide your heart, perhaps assisting yourself with your hands, you will infuse that aspect of you with greater light, with light codes that want to be expressions of light, which means they're already feeling the component of love, which is creation itself. And so when you're doing so, simply make a simple alignment, initiative, intention to receive directly from the galactic pulse of life, to not need to know where that is, how this comes to you, how may you receive it, because that's already conditional and it's being too analytically approached. But just know that the attunement of your heart, and if you do not yet feel it in such a strong degree, we showed you how simply you can energize it. Just moving your chest in a way that fully brings life force back into your heart and then spreading it throughout your whole body. So see that visual as the same thing is happening on bigger levels of creation. It moves out from the core and then it feeds all the systems that are created from the core. And that way you know that the core is always there while the aspects that are revolving around it continue to expand. But the core is always there. Simply intend and feel to embrace yet again the love of all life and creation. And let it show you in your life where you truly need to be moved in a new direction because a lot of times even in the spiritual circles people think that that's all they need to do and when they're doing this they're being good, good little humans this is not what it's about this is about becoming all becoming aligned with all being the all it's not about doing something to come at a certain level. This is the level of beingness and beating as one with the heart of all creation and the pulse of life. So let us take that breath in, into the center of your core heart and the core of your creation self. You can also invite it in with your hands. And knowing that from now on, once you truly embrace it, you can act as a pure conduit for spirit, for the light of creation. And through this guidance, you will be always moved in the right direction. You will know what to do and how to treat other forms of life through the sacredness and the appreciation of the seed of life that beats in all, because it is the all. It comes from all, and that is the one. Thank you. Wow, so that was beautiful, right? I want to also say that for those of you who are interested, I have a Tantrika Life Force Mastery course that comes together with the Pulse of Life, which really aligns you with the core of your heart. And I really wish to say that the Elohim and all beings of light who are here to share and infuse this reality and multiple realities with the light of creation, we do not destroy, we do not judge, we simply illuminate. And you can become an illumined one as well. So you can connect with the heart of your core creation self. You can connect with the family of light of the Elohim in the name of unity. And that's it. I will see you again very soon. Thank you for watching. With always so much love, wisdom, and power of the divine grace.